devil turns right around. So he took him up. The devil comes right back. Did you know just because you win in one battle against the devil doesn't mean that you, that's it? I got the victory. I'm going to go. Come on. He'll be right there on your shoulder again. I'm not giving him any praise. I'm just telling you the way it is. We live in a nasty world. And temptations, tests, and trials will come to you all the time. So he took him up. He showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Now he took him up. I don't know where or how, but it says that the devil took Jesus up. That dumb, defeated devil took Jesus up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. Didn't say he showed him all the world. Didn't say he showed him all the nations of the world or all the peoples of the world. It said he showed him all the kingdoms of the world. Did you know that Satan is in charge of kingdoms in this world? Kingdoms, principalities, powers. The Bible tells us that he is. Well, let's go on to the next verse. The devil said to him, I will give you. Now remember, he's a liar and he's a deceiver. Whenever you're dealing with the devil, remember he's a liar and a deceiver. He said, I will give you their splendor and all this authority because it has been given over to me and I can give it to anyone I want. Is that true? Yes, it is. Will he do it? No, he won't do it. Psalm 115. May you be blessed by the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The Lord is the maker of heaven and earth. Next verse. The heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he has given to the human race. You see, when God created the world, he said, man, this is great. And the last thing he created was man, humankind. Adam and Eve, the both. And he says, I've created this whole world for you. See, Genesis 1.28 says it this way. It says, God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, and subdue it. Rule. That's authority, dominion. That's power. Rule the earth and subdue it. In other words, who's in charge? Adam and Eve were, right? Humankind was in charge of this world that he had made. He said, rule the fish of the sea, just to make sure that you understand it, you know. He says, fill the earth, rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, rule the birds of the air, rule the every creature that crawls on the earth. In other words, it is your place as a human being in God's Garden of Eden to rule, to have dominion, to have a power, to have authority over everything that I've created. Okay? But what happened? The serpent came along and he says, did God really say, huh? Come on. See, he seeks to devour whom he can. Did you know Eve could at that moment says, get behind me, Satan. Huh? Who had the rule and dominion and the power? Eve did. Adam did. You've got the power today. I'm going to show you today. You've got the power. When the devil comes, you can tell him, get out of here. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. But she didn't. She listened. And as she listened, his temptation, she thought about it. She looked at the fruit of the tree. She took of the fruit. She ate it intentionally. Come on. She gave it to her husband. He knew not to do that. Huh? Couldn't he have said, Eve, don't do that. Don't enter into that temptation. Stand up. But he says, give me some, honey. And they both partook. And what happened is they gave their rule, their power, their authority, their dominion 
over all of God's creation and they gave it on a silver platter to Satan the serpent. That's why he can say to Jesus, I've got all this and I can give it to anybody I want to. Because he got it from man that gave it to him. And it's still that way to this day until Jesus come along. And Jesus, with his death on the cross, and when he descended down to hell, he overcame the devil and hell and death and all its principalities. And he took back all that had been stolen from God's creation the way God wanted it to be. And he came in and Jesus conquered the devil. He led captivity captive. He took what the Satan had tried to grab and he took it captive and he ascended into his father. And he said to his disciples before he left, he says, all authority and all power has been given unto me. Therefore, you go. You take my name. You take my authority. You take my place. And you go into the world. Why? Because I've conquered the devil. That's some good preaching, folks. Ephesians 2. <laughs> and we were dead in our trespasses and sins. Did you know the devil for the unbeliever is still running this world? Hello. For the unbeliever because they haven't received the power and authority. They haven't received the salvation that is in Jesus Christ. And the Bible says they're up there. Father, the devil. They're living in darkness. We're walking in the light. See? Because we have Jesus. We have the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ dwelling on the inside of us. He says, you were dead. That's past tense. You were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you previously walked according to the worldly age. According to the who? Ruler of the atmospheric domain. That's Satan. The spirit now working where? In the disobedient. To those that are rebelling against the Lord, Satan is still working there as a ruler. But not over the children of God. Amen. Not over the children of God. Was that just verse 1 or both of them? All right, thank you. Where are we? Verse 6. Verse 7. Revelation. Have I got that down here? I'm sorry, folks. Jerry, you don't ever lose your place, do you? <laughs> Revelation 11:15 says, The seventh angel blew his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and his Messiah, and he will reign forever and ever. Amen. The devil wants to rule over here. See, he wants, to, he wants everybody to worship him and him be in charge. You read in Isaiah and it talks about that very thing. It says that he wanted to exalt himself above the throne of God. See? But God had a plan. He says, I'm on a rescue. Did you know when Adam and Eve fell, it didn't come as any big surprise to God? It didn't blow him away? He said, that's all right. I got a plan. I got a plan. I got a plan. And he said, the plans of God will be fulfilled in this world and in your life. And God had a plan. He says, I'm going to send my son and he's going to redeem the earth so that my man, humankind, those that believe in me will be able to rule and reign. Glory, glory. And he says, son, one day all these kingdoms are going to be yours. Hallelujah. Let's go to Luke chapter 4 and, and verse 7. He had just said, remember that uh, he would give all of these things to him if he had just, uh, he says, if you then, I'll give you all this, if you then will just worship me, all will be yours. You see? 
because he wants to worship. He was saying to Jesus, you know, he didn't, he didn't address him as son of God. You remember the first temptation, he said, if you're the son of God. Now he's, he's actually addressing him as the son of man. He doesn't say that. But he's saying, hey, if you'll just worship me, you can be in charge of it all. You can have all the kingdoms. You can have all the authority over everything. See? But if he had worshipped Satan, would Satan have given it to him? No, he's a liar and a deceiver. See? What was he trying to do? He's saying, hey, instead of carrying out God's plan, instead of carrying out the cross and the suffering and the pain for humanity that pays the price, because the wages of sin is death. Okay? So when he takes sin, he's taking our death. He's taking our suffering. He's taking our pain. You know, sickness is just a little way closer to death. He's saying to Jesus, look, you don't have to do all that stuff that God wants you to do. You don't have to suffer. You don't have to take up your cross and follow him. I'll just give it to you. Let me give you a shortcut. Do it my way. Huh? Let's make it easy for you. You just bow down and worship me, and I'll give you all of that kingdom and authority and power that, Jesus, uh, that God had promised you. I'll give it to you right now. Huh? Does the devil ever tempt you with an easy way? And the Lord's speaking to you in the other ear. And he's saying, follow me. Follow me. I want to show you, I'm going to take the time. We've got plenty of time. I want to show you four ways. Everybody say four. Four, four ways that the devil's going to come to you and tempt you and test you to take the easy way and not follow God's way. You want to learn them? The first one is when you're physically weak. Now think about this. We just read it. For 40 days he was fasting in the wilderness. And he was hungry, the scripture said. I don't know about you, I can fast three days and feel weak. You know? When you are physically weak, when you've got mental stress, emotional pressure coming on you, and your body gets weak, and you can't sleep, and food has lost its taste, and life just seems tough. Do you know that's when the devil's going to come after you? Because your physical is attached to and connected with your spiritual. Your emotional affects your spiritual. I was talking with uh, somebody here a couple of weeks ago, and they were saying, well, I believe in God, but the pain is just so tough. I said, well, take some pain medicine and then you can believe God better. Come on, folks. You know, it's okay to mix medicines. You can believe God and still take medicine at the same time. Taking medicine doesn't negate God. But it makes your symptoms feel better so you can what? Believe God. So, when you're physically weak, the devil's going to come after you like you wouldn't believe. That's one of the times that he said, Mark 14, 38. Stay awake and pray so that you won't enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but what? The flesh is weak. The flesh is weak. Isaiah 40. What do we do with it then? What is God's solution? But those who trust in the Lord. Say, I trust in the Lord. I trust in the Lord. For those that trust in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not get weary. They'll walk and not faint. They'll dance and not lose their breath. Come on. 
I'm telling you, folks, when you're feeling weak, what does it say in Joel? It says, let the weak say I'm strong. Right. See? Look to the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. So another one. When you feel weak, when you feel tired, do those things that you can do. Take the pain medicine if you need to. Take that little nap if you need to. Whatever it needs to do, but look to the Lord as your strength and call out to Him and say, Lord, be my strength. Get happy. Come on, the joy of the Lord. Think about what the Lord has done. Count your many blessings. Name them one by one. And you'll rejoice when you see what God has done in your life. And you'll be able to overcome the devil. The second thing, did Jesus have all his disciples with him in the wilderness? He was by himself. Do you know that the devil will attack you when you're by yourself? He does it for two reasons. Number one, you don't have somebody there with you. Number two, it's easier for you to give in if nobody's watching. Hello? Well, nobody will really know. Nobody will see. You'll know, won't you? God will know, won't he? The devil will know. I'm telling you, folks, when you're alone. God said in Genesis, he said, it's not good that man be alone. So he created for him a what? A helper, a helpmate. It's not good for the women to be alone. You say, well, but I'm single. What, what do I do with something like that? Ecclesiastes 4, verse 9. It says, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their efforts. Next verse. For if either falls, his companion can lift him up, but pity the one who falls without another to lift him up. Come on, stay with me. Next verse. Also, if two lie down together, they can keep warm. But how can one person alone be warm? And if somebody overpowers one person, two can resist him. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. Say, so, yeah, but I'm single. I, I, I don't have a mate. I, what, what, do I, what do I do? That's why you got your church family. Amen. That's why Cowboys for Jesus is here. One of the main precepts for Celebrate Recovery that meets every Thursday night, come in for pizza at 6.30 and stay for the lessons at 7, you know. Uh, commercial. Commercial, thank you. <laughs> but that's why it's so important because one of, the, one of the principles is the accountability that you have with the group. You got somebody else that is helping you to overcome. And it doesn't matter if you're single, or if you're married, it never hurts in the family of God to pick up the phone and call somebody and say, man, I'm going through this. Help me. Amen. What are y'all, a bunch of lone rangers out there? Even he had Tonto. Come on. Even the long ranger had Tonto. You need somebody. Because two can fight the devil better than one. Another time is after a spiritual victory. Luke chapter 8. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Next verse. The seeds along the path are those who have heard the word. Then the devil, what? and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. When you have a spiritual victory, whether it be a revelation from God, oh man, that preacher, he did so good, and I go home, and I got this, and I, man, I'm going to God, I'm overcoming. And you get all excited and you see it, immediately, when? Immediately. The devil's going to come and try and steal that word from you. Because the word is life unto those that find it. It is health to their whole flesh. So if he can take the word, he's going to take that overcoming life. He's going to take away your health. Right. See? So he's going to come in and try to steal the word. But he can't do it. See? 
Because we can resist him, we can come against him with the word of God. I knew a lady in this church, she's not here any longer, so don't look around at your neighbor. <laughs> but there was a lady in this church and she was suffering with all kinds of pains in her knees and in her hip. In fact, matter, one, one hip was, you know, different than the other. And she come and she asked for prayer. And we'd been preaching on healing on Wednesday nights. We had a healing school for a while. And we were preaching on healing. And we prayed for her. She says, oh man, I, I, I feel that. And the next week she come back and she says, I tell you what, the Lord not only healed my knees, because that's what we was praying for, but she says, I just realized this week that my hip got all straightened out too and the pain is totally gone and I'm just doing great. Huh? Come on. Well, what happened? She had the victory. Are you with me? Immediately. That next week, after she gave her testimony, that next week, what, what's that? Oh, oh, man. Golly, that hurts. Oh, man. I, I'm not able to walk and do like I, I thought I could. I guess God didn't heal me. Huh? See, immediately the devil came and gave her some pain. What should she have done? She should have turned to that dumb devil and says, No. Hands were laid on me. The Bible says you lay hands on the sick and they recover. I had hands laid on me. I recovered back two weeks ago on that Wednesday night. Come on now. I'm, I'm explaining to you how to apply the word of God. And you turn to that devil and you tell him the word of God. But she didn't do that. She says, oh, that pain. So what was she doing? See, the devil walks around as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So instead of listening to God's word, she listened to the devil's word. Huh? Come on. She gave place to the devil and believed the devil, the pain, over God's word, over what she had. It got worse. It got worse. Before you know it, her knees were bad again. I'm telling you, folks, he is real and he will come after you, but you don't have to allow it. You can stand up. If she had stood up, if any of us, when the devil comes to you, when you get a victory from God, you get a revelation, you get a, a new calling, uh, you get a new direction, uh, you, you experience a healing, you see a deliverance, uh, you see your children change, you see your neighbor coming to, whatever it might be, hold on to it. Hold on to the word of God. Keep it, and because the devil's going to come. See, if you're not ignorant of his devices, you can overcome him. If you know he's going to uh, run around on, on your left flank, then by golly, turn that way and face him head on. See? And if you'll quote the word of God, if you'll stay strong on the word of God, when you get those victories, find it in the word and keep it in the word. And then stand up to him when that pain comes, when that, when, when that child begins to fall, when that person starts to go back to that addiction. Say, oh, no, 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 devil. You can't have that. They've been set free. When he wants to put condemnation and guilt on you, say, no, 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 no. That might have been in the past, but praise God. There is no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. Woo-hoo. The fourth way. Do y'all like to learn the fourth way? Proverbs 16, 18. I forgot that. Pride comes before destruction and an arrogant spirit before a fall. It's God doing it in you, not you. So don't go bragging about yourself. Brag about God. The fourth way that he's going to attack you, and he did here with Jesus, is what I call instant gratification. Instant gratification. Kind of like a fishing lure. 
I got some really fancy fishing lures. I mean, they look good, you know? They make a little noise. They, they move when you pull them through the water and everything. To that fish, that looks good. Man, that's what I like. But how many know when that fish comes up to grab that lure, what's it got? It's got a hook. And the devil will give you the easy way. He'll entice you with all these pretty things. He'll tell you how sweet it's going to be. He'll tell you how, how, oh, life will be so much. All that pain will go away. Huh? But it always has a hook. See? There's always a consequence with the devil's temptation. Matthew 7. Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the road is broad that leads to destruction. The easy way will lead to destruction, folks, if you give in to the devil's temptation. And there are many who go through it. How narrow is the gate and difficult the road that leads to life, and few find it. Few find it. You know, a lot of people preach the gospel, the old Christian life is just so great and easy. You know, all you got to do is receive Jesus. That's true. Entering the Christian life is something very easy because he did it all for us. But to live out the Christian life, you've got to have faith in him and what he has done and you've got to walk it every single day. You can't go on your past glories. You got to live today. And Jesus is Lord today, not just yesterday. We should all have a testimony for today that we can share. Proverbs 22 says, A prudent man perceives evil and hides himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. See, if you recognize the devil's devices, if you recognize that he's going to try and make it, oh, do this. You know that what's right, but let me just give you a shortcut. You'll, you'll pay for it. Next verse. Thorns and snares are in the way of the perverse, but he who guards his soul will be far from them. You give into it, it's going to have hooks. It's going to have thorns and thistles, and it's going to be a rough life with the devil. But if you're prudent, if you don't give into that, if you will guard your soul, how do you guard your soul? With the Word of God. You guard your soul by coming to church. You guard your soul with fellowship with believers. You guard your soul with praise and worship to the Lord. Huh? You put on the full armor of God. Huh? You have your, your, your helmet of salvation. You know that you know that you know that you know that you're saved. I've been delivered from the hand of the enemy. Psalm 119.11 I have treasured your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. I hate to just keep saying this over and over and over again, but the word of God, the Bible, is so important to spend time daily in the Bible. Because what you're doing is you're treasuring God's word. You're putting it in your heart and in your mind. And that's how you're going to overcome each and every single time. Matthew 16. Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone wants to come with me, he must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. You're going to face temptations. You're going to face trials. You're going to have to go through some of them. But he'll give you the strength to bear it he will be with you every single way. If you look for him, he's got a way of escape for you to be able to get out from that and that's through the word of God. You can overcome temptation, tests, and trials by doing exactly what Jesus did. Let's finish this temptation in Luke chapter 4 and verse 8. Jesus answered, and this is us, this is your answer. It is written. 
It's written in the word of God is what he was saying. You see, when he said, worship the Lord your God and serve him only, he was co quoting out of Deuteronomy, the law that Moses had given them. And he said that you'll have no other gods before you. You'll worship the Lord your God and him only will you worship. So Jesus took the word of God that he had and he defeated the devil with it. And that's what we're going to do, is we're going to take the Word of God and we're going to defeat the devil with it. Philippians 2, verse 10. Close with this verse. So that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, and those who are in heaven, that's the angels, the saints that have gone before us, those on earth, that's me and you in this world, even those that don't know Jesus, it says, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Those in heaven and on the earth and the devil, the dumb, defeated devil and all his demons that are under the earth and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Folks, Jesus is Lord. And you can make him Lord in your life today. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, this is your opportunity to change families, to get out of the family of the devil and darkness and defeat and enter into the life of God, a life of abundance, a life with Jesus Christ, a life that causes us to walk in the light. So with every head bowed, every eye closed, Nobody looking around but praying. Is there anybody here that says, I've been living a defeated life. I've been struggling. I've been in those thorns. And I'd like to have Jesus come into my life. And I'm not for sure if I'm saved. I might have been as a kid. I don't know. But you can find out today. If you would like me to pray for you right where you are, just lift up your hand. Raise your hand. I see that hand. I see that hand. Anyone else? I see those hands. All right, just keep your hand up. I'm going to pray for you. Everybody else has got their head bowed, their eyes closed. But we're acknowledging to God that today I'm going to get the victory. Today I'm going to look to Jesus. Today Jesus is going to be Lord over my life and over this situation. Father, you see these hands? Lord, Father, they are confessing Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Father, I acknowledge it in Jesus' name that they are more than conquerors, Heavenly Father. Father, I thank you that they have passed from death unto life, Heavenly Father. They passed from darkness into light. In the name of Jesus, dear Lord, your word says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And Father, we acknowledge their salvation. We acknowledge their freedom, Heavenly Father, from the grasp of Satan and their liberty in the Lord Jesus Christ. We praise you and we thank you, dear Lord. It'll make a difference because they prayed and agreed with me in this prayer. In Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. 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 We got a little book for you. Uh, take it and study it because there's so much to the Christian life. There's so much to the Christian life. And we got three little, little uh, areas that we want you to, to study. So take this book home, read it, go over it. If you got any questions, contact us. If you'd like more prayer, Pastor and myself will be here uh, available for you. Amen? Amen? You know you're in cowboy church and it's through when the preacher says, y'all come back now, you hear?